Hey there, how are you doing? Rodrigo here for Textualize, and in this eighth video, I just, I just, I can't count, so I had to check my notes. In this eighth video of our series in building a stopwatch app with Textual, I'm going to tell you about two things that are mostly related with CSS, but that are going to make our life much much easier when we're developing our stopwatch and when we're updating our interface when the user clicks buttons when they start the stopwatch when they stop it so yeah i really need to tell you about css classes and nested selectors so sit tight and let's see what this means what this what what what's the relevance of this so so far let me open our css file so far we've have we've seen two types of selectors in our CSS file. We have classes here, the name of the class, for example, the stopwatch class and the time display class. And we've had IDs, which start with the hash, with the octothorpe. So the ID start, the ID stop, and the ID reset. So these are two different types of um, selectors. But there's a third type. And this third type is called a class. Now, sadly, this can be confusing because Python has classes, but now we're talking about CSS classes. And a CSS class is like a, it's like a label or a tag that you can attach to different things. And however many things have that specific tag can be styled the same way. So for example, for example, I could create a class hidden. Let me write this down and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Okay, so I just wanted to write this down. So again, in a CSS file, you always have the selector and then the rules. So this must be a selector, right? So what does this mean? A selector that starts with a dot is a class. So what I'm saying, what this line, what this, sorry, what these three lines say is, whatever, whenever you find something with the class hidden, set its display to none. So, for example, how could you use this class? Well, we could remove the display none from the stop button. So now we have all of the buttons here, they're just docked, and we have this class that can hide things. And for example, I could go to the stopwatch.py, and inside my stopwatch, here it is, inside my stopwatch, when I yield the button stop, now I want some more space, so let me do this. I could also say, classes equals and now in here i write all of the classes that i want to attach to this button from the get, from the get-go so now i'm saying okay i want this button i want the button stop to be to have the class hidden and now if i run my application the stop button is hidden why because when i created the button here i attached the class hidden to it and in our CSS file, there's a selector that says things with the class hidden have display none. Why is this useful? Because now I can add this tag, this CSS class, to other things. For example, I could say, well, the reset button should also be hidden. So to its classes, let's, have, let's add the hidden class. Now if I rerun the app, the reset button is gone. I could also say, well, the time display, it should start out as hidden as well. So I add the class, and there you go, it's gone. So the thing about CSS classes is that you can attach a couple of rules to them, and then you can put that class, which acts like a, a tag, you can tag whatever widgets you want with it, so you can reuse it. And it's useful and we'll we'll see it in the next video it's useful because you can dynamically add and remove classes from widgets so the idea here is we're going to use a class to help us control whether the start and the stop buttons are shown or not because we we always want to show only one of them right we want them to alternate so if i'm showing this one i'm hiding this one and if i'm showing this one i want to hide this one so we we are going to use a class that's going to be added or removed to determine which button is being shown. Now, there's one extra thing I need to show you, and that's um, nested selectors. So this was just a new type of selector, right? It's a class. 
and it works as any other selector. So let me get rid of this here. And this. Uh, is it done? And now let me just restore the CSS here. So this was, sorry, display hidden. So now we're back to the start, if I am not mistaken. Nope, we're not. It's not display hidden, sorry, it's display none. I see there's an error here that says I, it's either display block or display none. I, for some reason, I, I invented a new value. All right, so this is where we were at. Now, what I'm going to show you is how to use nested um, nested selectors. Suppose, for example, that your stopwatch app, not only does it contain all of these stopwatches here, but it also has a another button at the top that says yield button. And now it's going to say, um, say, for example, stop all, stop all, sure, stop all. Now I'm going to quit and I'm going to restart. And the button is over there, right? Now, I don't like I don't like the button. I don't like the way this looks. Uh, I want to I want to make it I don't know maybe wider. All right. And so one way I could do that is by saying actually I don't think I want to say it like that. Am I doing this wrong? I am. Because this is outside. Now this works, this still works, sorry. So there's buttons. I have buttons in here and I have buttons inside the stopwatches, right? And now if I write something like, where is it? If I write something like button width 32, not 342, 32, all buttons will be much wider. All of the buttons. But maybe I only wanted to target the buttons inside the stopwatch. And if you want to target things that are nested, you can also nest selectors. So for instance, instead of targeting every single button by writing button here, you could target buttons inside stopwatches. And to do that, you say stopwatch button. And now you're only targeting buttons inside stopwatches. Notice how this button over here is no longer wide. Why is that? Because the selector here, the space says, look for stopwatches that have buttons. That's what the space here means. And so by separating selectors with spaces, you are able to nest them. Now, this doesn't work only with types, with Python classes. You could nest other things, for example, if I delete this, but if I add this here, stopwatch, 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 this is actually equivalent to what we had before. Equivalent for our app, but what it says now is you only dock to the left widgets with ID start inside stopwatches. So if I were to say, where's my stop all button? If I were to say that the ID of this button is also stop, now I need to restart because I changed the Python code. Right now, the stop button is shown, right? But if I go ahead and if I remove this stopwatch from here, the stop all button is hidden because that button also had the ID stop. But these rules, they're only supposed to apply to buttons inside the stopwatch. So that's why you nest it here. All right, so you can use nesting to be more specific about the things you want to target. And we're going to do this in the next video. So just before we conclude, let me restore what we have so that we can all be at the same place. So where's the, there's an extra button. Let's get rid of that. And I think that's it. Let me rerun. Yes, that's it. So this is our app. And now we're going to use the knowledge of CSS classes and the knowledge of nested selectors to make sure that the start and stop buttons can be shown and hidden accordingly. I'll see you soon.